All right, here goes. Uh, are they floating? They're walking on... What is this guy doing? Moonwalking around? Uh, that's what you get for showing off. Yeah, something's not right. Slow down. The sidewalk's for regular walking, not for fancy walking. Hey, welcome to another episode of Chaos Craft. I'm your host, Matt, with Schematical, and this week we did a bunch of different stuff, from setting up a maze to making the mobs actually hostile towards the bots for survival mode. My plan is to make this a training room setting, so when you're setting up a training scenario and rewards, you can say mobs aggressive or mobs not aggressive. It's up to you. When I've done this in previous versions of Chaos Craft, they typically end up digging holes and just hiding in them, and those are the ones that survive the longest. In this one, that didn't happen quite so quickly. They mainly just got abused for a while. At one point, I realized I must have set the aggression level way too high or somehow told mobs that I didn't actually intend to be aggressive to be aggressive. So I had to fix that. This llama's just spitting and killing all these bots. Changing the llama was a pretty easy fix, but it still had other unexpected effects. Like for example, this guy just going on a murder spree, even if they're not even looking at him, he just goes directly after them and kills them pretty much instantly. Another thing I managed to do this week was to fix the single player mode so you can actually build a world in single player and have them spawn. Uh, here you can see a bunch of them dying over and over again as I try and get single player world stuff to work because we built this primarily with multiplayer in mind for 0 0.3. During my Friday live stream, Super Jerry brought up that he'd like to see a lava maze, and being as he's one of our longtime contributors, both on Patreon and to the actual code base, I decided let's give it a shot. So I spawned up a flat world and started building a maze. After massively screwing up the fill command a couple dozen times, we actually ended up with an environment we could test in. So now we've got this beautiful maze here with the spawn blocks that their textures don't load. And here come our orgs. They're looking good, except they are stuck in the floor. Not quite there yet. That guy's stuck in a wall. Okay, let's try this again. And this time they're spawning, they're jumping, and there's one in the background escaping to that village over there. Not quite where we need. So now we have a whole bunch of bots that are learning somewhat how to game the system. They were learning how to jump over the stuff. They were learning how to go horizontally to maximize through here, but none of them have really figured out how to 100% avoid lava yet. So we're getting there though. It's interesting to see how the game, but this little wall here is because they figured out how to jump over that and they were getting pretty far. I also dropped their health down to just one, so they only have a little bit of leeway with that lava. They get 10 points for every block that they cover heading towards the goal there. So for example, these guys have 510. You can see they started off with a very low average of slowly creeping up. They have a max of 320 kind of off the bat. That's pretty good. And they got up to 510 and they're kind of plateaued at 510, which means they're probably gonna die in a while if they don't figure out a way to beat that plateau. So this is what a neural net view looks like here. And as you can see, it has a whole lot more is looking at inputs. That's because when they spawn, I have a set up a property where I can give them some default inputs or outputs or neurons that I would like them to have. To speed them up, instead of just using Neato, I gave their 20 eyes each the ability to look at lava and stone right away. So those can fire off. Now you can see this guy hasn't actually made great use of a lot of these inputs. Uh, there he's got is looking at inputs. He's using a bunch of them, but not all of them. A bunch of them are actually not being used. So eventually, in a long enough timeline, they should start to use more and more of these. And you see he doesn't use this place block or walk sideways. This one does not actually have the walk sideways input engaged, so that's interesting. But he's got a lot of relationships here. He's got some middle neurons, 
I probably could do some better tweaking of this front end to make the visualization of it better. The red lines are uh, neural nets that are they're the relationship, the neuron, the connecting relationship between this neuron and that neuron is negative and the blue is positive and the thicker it is, the heavier it is, closer to one versus 0.1. So that's what I've been working on. I've also created this public Trello board that I've linked to in the Discord. You guys can check out my progress. That one's actually on deck. So that's pretty much it for this week. Felt like I got a lot done. We've made huge strides just in the last week alone. I know they aren't really showing it as far as intelligence yet, but we're getting a lot of tools to help them get there. So thank you all for following. I love it when you guys smash or gently press the like button, subscribe button. Uh, those of you guys that are on Patreon, like you guys are helping me pay for this. I do plan to do a video that breaks down the cost of this because it is mounting in costs as we get more users. So I appreciate you all joining. Uh, jump on the conversation on Discord. Uh, I love to chat with you guys. Thanks. Slow down. The sidewalk's for regular walking, not for fancy walking. <laughs>